Hi everyone, it's Eleanor Bowson here from Hairdresser's Journal. Welcome back to our Upskills series. We've got a really exciting tutorial lined up for you today with Jordana Cabella, who is owner of Cabella Salon, Wella Craft Expert, and now an author of The Mindful Hairdresser. Welcome, Jordana. Thank you very much. Good morning. How is everyone? <laughs> it's great to have you with us, and I'm sure everyone tuning in is really excited for your tutorial. Can you share with us what you're going to be doing today? Yes, so I'm sure all of you have already seen, but Billie Eilish has literally broken the internet with the reveal of her brand new haircut and colour um, and style. So she's been actually wearing a wig for the last six weeks while her hairdresser has been preparing her colour underneath the wig to strip out um, the very infamous green and black um, sort of colour that she was sporting. And she'd managed to get it to a quite a nice kind of pale yellow and um, of course they had to cut up her hair because obviously the damage or well, the condition was probably compromised um, but the cut is absolutely beautiful it kind of resembles like a, a grown out sort of 70s layered flicky textured long haircut and I think what's really nice about it is um, it's a long haircut but it's it's a long haircut with interest so it's got movement really really nice for the kind of clients that have a little bit of a wave but they never feel like they've ever had curly hair, but you know that if they slept on their hair wet, it would be a bit wavy. And I'd say that that's literally like 60 to 70% of, of, of Caucasian hair is kind of got that texture. So really nice, versatile haircut. So I thought I'd show you my interpretation of it or how I would go about it in the salon using some really super simple um, sectioning patterns. I will be sharing with you my, my um, sectioning pattern that I've drawn out for you. Um, but I think that will be added to the video, hopefully, um, when they upload it. So, yes, yeah, so this is my mannequin. Um, I've chosen, chosen a blonde mannequin to sort of bear as much resemblance to the eyelid as possible. Um, so she's got completely one length hair all over. Um, just bring her up a touch. Um, and what I would normally do in the salon is I'd actually use my, my trusted razor and now you can get this look using scissors, but personally, I find that a razor um, kind of just makes everything a bit quicker. And if you're au okay with using a razor, then um, I would. This is my razor. Um, it's kind of got like a serrated sort of edge. So you can either choose to kind of cut, cut with the razor flat, which gives you more of a torn out feel or you can cut with the razor slightly elevated downwards or pointed downwards, and that gives you more of a blunt finish. So this is Molly the man mannequin. <laughs> um, simple, simple uh, middle parting to start us off. And what I'm gonna do is to establish my guideline, I'm gonna start this haircut from the front because um, the front is where the focal point is, and this is where a lot of the kind of texture flicks are happening. So I'm going to start by taking sort of one inch section to show you there. Almost like a one inch section around the hairline. This is almost curved. I'm literally just following her hairline. Um, obviously slightly different from a, for a mannequin because their hair tends to be very thick around the hairline. But if it was a client, sometimes I go sort of round and down. Um, and I'm just gonna get everything out of the way and clip that over exactly the same on the other side. So this is the first section just to establish our guideline. Now you can go a bit thinner, but because I'm working with a razor, I feel like I can go slightly thicker. Um, and of course, this is all very salon friendly. So we're not working in tiny, tiny sections. Okay, so exactly the same on the other side. The hair is quite damp, but it's not soaking wet. Um, but I only really use a razor on wet hair because um, the razor just glides really nicely. I've also just changed my razor blade as well, so it's nice and sharp. Okay, so if I just pop the head down, you can literally see the sectioning pattern literally just like that. So what I'm going to do now is form my guideline. Now my guideline is going to be formed by graduation 
I call this forward graduation. So I'm going to start on the left hand side. Turn her to you. Start on the right hand side so that you can visually see this. So I'm going to take that front section and I'm going to elevate it and I'm going to shift it forward. So rather than literally cutting it like this, that's going to give me a really blunt line. The shape I'm getting is going to be from the, from the nose down towards my connection point at the back. So in order to make this symmetrical, I always have to choose my connection point, which is this longest bit here, and my connection point to the front, which is this piece here. So essentially I'm drawing a line between the shortest piece and the longest piece. Now that line I draw can be quite steep, it can be curved, it can be shallow. All of those factors are going to influence how much it flicks out, how much it kind of moves. So rather than cutting, from here to here in the natural fall, which will give us a really sort of blunt finish. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut from here to here, shifted and lifted up here. Now, because we're directing away from the natural fall, this is actually gonna give us a really beautiful feathered, almost like it's grown out layers kind of finish. I find a lot of my clients really, really like that. You know, they always say, oh, I love it after the first week. Um, so this is the kind of, haircut or, or technique that you can get without having to kind of wear in the hair to get that layered effect that looks grown out. If there are any questions, Eleanor, fire, the, fire away. Amazing. We have had a few. Um, a couple of questions about where you got the razor from. Um, very good question. I think it's actually called the Razor Company. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> the Razor Company, yeah. So um, let me just double check that because it should say it on here. No, no, it's called the slider. The slider. The slider. Awesome. It's my favourite razor because um, you can't cut yourself however you use it. Um, and I do work quite quickly, so it's handy that you can't cut yourself. Um, That's and, reassuring. <laughs> yeah, the fact that it's got like that serrated edge just gives you a little bit more control rather than using like a kind of exposed razor. Um, yeah, the serrated edge really helps. Amazing. And how many people do you think, would you think this style is going to be really popular when um, salons reopen in April? Um, I don't know, though. No. I hope it is. I do because I love long hair, don't get me wrong, and I think it's so beautiful and feminine, but um, I've been longing for a long haircut that actually gives you uh, excitement <laughs> you know it, it, it's a challenge to cut and it, it has movement to it and it's exciting and it's different and it's eye-catching but it's long and so this is such a good sort of box ticker I think this haircut um, and of course she's got this grown-out fringe that kind of just looks so accidental and effortless so I do really hope this is a popular um, choice for people and obviously you can sort of bespoke it and make it longer in places you can make it thicker in places but I also think it's a really really good technique to like encourage like hair to kind of sit slightly wider and obviously when we wear our hair as women we're constantly doing this to sort of fill out the bits and kind of widen it because it makes our faces look smaller and kind of like you know it shapes the face more so any width you can have here or you know framing pieces or contour edges um are so popular it feels like you're taking off a lot of hair so when the clients are having this done you might want to tell them that because obviously you're doing a lot of the haircut right in front of their eyes so they might see a lot of the hair come off as you're razoring and freak out but it's something to maybe pre-warn them because actually most of the hair is coming off these front pieces here and a lot of the, the layering and the length is kept at the back. So you still have, you know, that, um, that length that you can bring around to the front and see. It's just that mainly we're, we're kind of contouring these pieces around the face, we really open up the face. And of course that fringe kind of comes down into those layers. So I will get on with it because I'm conscious that we've got too much time. Not, not, not too much time. So I've just cut my first connection point. Now I'm only talking you through this because it's a demo, but normally I'd go straight in. So my connection point, I've literally just um, raised that tiny piece off. Okay, and that's just below the, the, the nose. And that is now going to be my first connection point to my second connection point, okay? So I'm literally joining the dots here. So 
I'm going to comb everything nice and neatly. Shifting and lifting, as we know, the shifting and the lifting is what is going to create our lovely um, sort of textured line. So I've done my first bit. So literally, just like you would with the scissors, just joining it down. I'm going with the razor. I'm going to turn the section over to you so you can see it. And I'm literally just joining that line, gently cutting. I'm not tearing too much because I can always go in and um, texturize more. I'm just going to dampen it down slightly. And you can already see, obviously, you know, when you're cutting, you can already see how lovely that sits. I turn her over to you. Can you see that? Really, really nice. Still looks lovely and long. Doesn't look too blunt and chunky. Very wearable. Um, so I'm literally going to repeat the same on the other side. So I'll do this side towards the front so you get a nice angle. So in order to make this symmetrical, I'm literally taking exactly the same connection point from the nose and connecting it back. Any questions, Eleanor? We have um, a couple of people have just joined us um, just now, so they just want to make sure that it's being recorded and available to watch afterwards, which it will be on IGTV and Facebook as well. Um, but Lee wants to know, um, have you cut the back yet? You haven't touched the back, have you? I haven't touched the back. This is all very raw, guys. I was going to do a little bit of a cheating situation and cut the back and only show you the front, but I thought that was a bit, a bit of a cheating. <laughs> method <laughs> so i thought i'd let you see the whole thing um now the most important part of this cut is just making sure our guideline the same way same way we do with the bob we want to make sure our guideline the first section of the cutting is perfect once that section is perfect everything comes down to that line and the haircut you can whiz through so in order to make sure it's perfect i'm literally going to comb everything down and up so that I can see that lovely V taking place, which is there. And all I'm doing now is visually checking that I've got the right length on both sides. Okay, so we want to take our longest piece and double check that. And I'm just going to have a little look here. And if I comb it in such a way that you can kind of see it taking shape, it's all comb and flick the way you would with a blow dryer. I think this is actually quite a nice thing to do when it's wet because the clients can sort of visually see and they go, oh, and they get excited. And so, can you see that? I don't know if you can, but um, sometimes one of the things I do when I'm cutting fringes or these front layers is I kind of comb it out like that and flick it out and they can kind of see where it's going to sit. Obviously when it's wet, it's going to sit a bit lower because obviously it bounces up when it's dry. But I quite like sort of flicking it out of my comb because if they do want it shorter, then they, they can give you that indication before um, you, you carry on with the rest of the haircut. Again, it's just about constant communication with the client um, throughout the process um, so that it doesn't feel like they're in the dark and you're doing what you want sort of thing. It makes them, even if they're not deciding on anything, it makes them feel like you really care what they want rather than just doing what you think is best. Now, I've just seen a couple of questions come in about scissors. So the only difference I would say with scissors is rather than, even though you're shifting and lifting the section, I still wouldn't cut blunt. What I would do is point cut that. Um, I just find because the, the angle like so is a little bit hard to do with the scissors and, and point cut. I just find that it's a lot sort of quicker to do with the razor. And so long as the hair is wet and the razor is really sharp, it's not going to tear the hair, it's not going to give you split ends. There's a lot of like perceptions attached to razoring, which I, I completely disagree with because if it's used in the right way, it can give you such a beautiful effect. Of course, there's 10 ways to skin a cat and definitely using the scissors is 100% is an option. You would just have to make sure you don't blunt cut or club cut um, even though you're shifting and lifting, um, try and point and cut instead, just to give it that really nice razor feel, that kind of lived in feel at the edge rather than too blunt and choppy. My hair's really, really straight. So when I don't use a razor or when I don't club, um, 
point cut, what happens is you see those lines, um, and I'm talking poker straight, and there's a lot of clients out there with poker straight hair that maybe won't kind of bevel it under or bevel it out with a blow dryer. So you have to take that into consideration because there's nothing worse than seeing that choppiness, in my opinion. Right, so I'm really happy with my front two sections. They are my guidelines, my trusted guidelines. And now all I'm doing, this is in a middle parting, I'm literally working back. So I'm gonna take my next section like this, next section like this. We're literally gonna do this haircut in four sections. So one, which is here, two, three, four, Walk, working our way all the way back to the center parting and everything gets brought forward. So I'm gonna get on with it and you can answer any questions, Eleanor. Amazing. The questions are coming in free, thick and fast. So I'll try and get free as many as possible. But um, Stephen has said, would you refine the graduation in your line to tidy up the softer, wispier bits prior to drying? Sorry, say that again. Um, would you refine the graduation in your line to tidy up the softer, wispier bits prior to drying? So what we what we actually want is we want the graduation. We want uh, we want to kind of see that graduated feather effect. So I wouldn't, what I would do is when it's dry, I would personalize it, um, absolutely. Some places might need a little bit more thickening up if the hair's slightly thinner here, I would then pull that forward and club cut it if I need to, because um, we don't want wispy bits, but we do want something quite lived in and feathered. Otherwise, sometimes the weight of the edge of this hair car will not allow it to sit in the way that it does on Billy. Amazing. Question. If it hasn't, please do feel free to say. Awesome. Thanks, Jordana. Um, Terry would like to know, will a change in body position and cutting angle affect the balance and movement on each side? Um, so I always do it like this, right in front of the client, so I can literally see above my section. I can see my, um, what do you call it, my um, guideline underneath. I can see it through. So I always stand in front of the client. So yes, I would say it definitely does influence it. Some people like to stand, stand behind the client and do it that way. However, I just find there's so much more control over doing it this way. And of course you can visually see it, which is great. So what I'm doing is with that subsequent section, pulling it forward and using exactly the same cutting angle and combing angle, pulling it all forward to connect to my end connection point. So that's done. So, so quick and simple and working my way back. Any more questions? Yeah, please do send in your questions for Jordana and we'll put them forward to her. But um, lots of people saying they're loving this look. Um, Kirsty says, this is so lovely, making my OCD so happy. <laughs> OCD, really? Because I've been told I'm quite, I mean, I am a technical hairdresser, but I am, I do like salon friendly techniques and I love, I just love um, simplifying things. Um, but I also love, you know, being creative and visually cutting. So I've been told before, I've got some Sassoon colleagues that they love, they love taking much smaller sections than I do. Um, but I'm glad this is satisfying your OCD. I'm just combing again to see visually where this is sitting. It's looking quite 70s kind of layering. Um, it might look a bit scary to you, the amount of hair that's coming off, but just remember that when that sits back in the natural form, she's still got so much length. She's just got this beautiful, like, kind of shape. The only good thing I would say about these mannequins is that they have got a lovely texture to it. I know they're quite difficult to blow dry, and I know they're very heavy in areas, particularly around the hairline, but what I'm liking about these mannequins is they kind of resemble that sort of slept-in texture. Um, so actually, this is going to be quite easy to, to blow dry. So everything, I hope um, I'm making this clear, everything is coming forward exactly to that first. So we're coming over around the head and right up to that first cutting angle. So this is a lot about muscle memory, but also about finding your original um, guideline and just not deviating, just trust that guideline. It might feel scary, particularly if she's got very, very long hair around the front, like me, that I don't have too much layering around the front. This will feel scary, but if you trust that first guideline, 
And if you're worried, you can always start it by the chin rather than by the nose. But if you trust that first guideline, you just can't go wrong. It's just so simple. So I'm at the back now of the first side, making sure everything's combed forward. I'm just gonna give that a little spray down. So as we, as we work our way back, you'll find there's less and less hair to come and cut, to, sorry, to comb over and cut off because what is happening is the traveling distance is getting longer and longer. So essentially this is all connected. It's just that we haven't actually cut the back yet. So what we will be doing is cutting the back um, layer. So that side is done. If we want to make it look cute, then we can do our little thing where we sort of flick it out of the comb while it's wet, see how it's looking in the mirror, give it a little shake, lovely, and I'm going to move on to the side. Now this, this side, it's exactly the same technique, but I'm just going to cut it at this angle for you, because I think it might be nice for you to see two angles. How are we doing for time? We're at 10 to 1, so no rush. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And uh, any more questions? I've had a few more in. Um, a lot of people asking about managing client expectations, like if they want to make a drastic transformation to this Billie Eilish blonde, how can you go about creating a manageable sort of expectation for that? Are we talking colour or style? Or should I just answer both? Uh, let's go for both. Okay, so colour-wise, actually... I give a lot away in, in my book that I've written called The Mindful Hairdresser. So this book is all about kind of like the psychology behind the profession. I just feel like in my career, it's something that we don't talk about, but it's something we do. And people do it so naturally. Like as hairdressers, we kind of learn it on the job because we're not taught it at NDQ level. There's no modules on it. But people teach you technical skills but you're never really taught when you're throwing in the deep end how to connect with the client how to manage expectations how to deal with you know burnout how to deal with the emotional intelligence behind it and how to read clients non-verbal communication cues there's so much that goes on and we're given about five minutes to to do all that in a consultation so what i found was oh my god hairdressers are practicing these skills that they're not even taught and i was like that's amazing. And everyone does it slightly differently. And I just observed people for a long time. And I found that some hair just found it a lot more natural. You know, they kind of, they kind of, it just came to them. And there were other hairdressers who really struggled with it. And it took them two or three years to build that confidence to, of interpersonal skills to make their clients feel good as well as look good. And for me, it's an equally important skill to have that. So in the book, I talk about managing expectations. Um, and one of the things we do is something called the trust triangle, um, particularly for color work. So when someone comes in with a, a picture of Kim Kardashian or Sienna Miller's blonde, and they're obviously a classic sort of XXL, dark, dark black client using, you know, box dye for like five years. What we don't want to do as hairdressers, which is, which is the most natural thing to do, is, is sort of put them off the idea, even though we know that essentially we're kind of managing expectations by doing that. But if we get excited for them, we jump on board with their idea, no matter how far-fetched it is, just to show them that actually we're not trampling, we're not, you're not raining on their parade, we're not trampling over their dreams um, in a condescending way. What we're doing is we're saying, I love that. It's actually on my board as well, it's gorgeous that the roadblocks that you may face with that are X, Y, and Z. So jump on the board with the idea, no matter how stupid the idea is. And then once they know that you're on board with that idea, when you, when you have the time to actually go through it with them and say like, here are the challenges that you may face. Your hair might fall out because it's, <laughs> because it's the compromised condition. Um, it may be that it takes a year to get there and you might have to sort of embrace the ginger stage, you know, the midway stage, um, and it might cost you a lot of money. And so what you're doing is you're involving them in the decision-making process to then say, do you know what's not worth it? But you're not making the decision for them. So as with, you know, when you go to a dentist, they'll say, this is what it costs for braces. This is what it costs to whiten your teeth. You don't have to. These are the, um, it may be sensitive, maybe it may cause X, Y, and Z, it may cause discomfort having Invisalign, 
um, but it's up to you. And essentially you still feel very much in control. And I think although we are the experts, and yes, we do advise as experts, if you want your client to be on board with you, you have to be on board with them first. And so get them involved, share with them the challenges they may face in a huge transformation, um, but getting, getting excited about it. And then one of the things we do is we kind of, we shift the burden of responsibility. So all of a sudden, rather than the hairdresser and sorry, rather than the client and the hair looking up at you, this is a trust triangle, rather than the hairdresser, the client and the hair looking up at you as the hairdresser to perform miracles, what you're doing is you're actually changing that triangle and flipping it on its head by becoming a team with the client. So you and I want this end result. We're going to get there. You need to do your homework. Your, um, your homework is making sure that you look after your hair, you invest in products, you have the time, and you invest in your money at the salon. And my homework is do, to do everything that's technically possible to get you that end result. Let's hope your hair behaves. All of a sudden, you become an ally with your client, and the hair becomes the enemy, or the hair becomes the responsibility. Let's just hope your hair allows us to get there. And so by shifting that, I know it's only for five or 10 minutes you may have for a consultation, but you can get quite au fait and quite quick with this. But by shifting that, you're, you're, what you're doing by shifting that responsibility is you're making your life easier and you're managing expectations in a way that is actually psychologically um, really good for a relationship as a hairdresser and a client. So that's what we do in the salon. You're involving them in a decision and you're not overstepping you know, the mark. You're not telling them, you know, I know best, leave it with me, let me decide. Um, because you know what, when I get a new client, I always quiz them, why have you come here? What, what made you leave your last hairdresser? Because it's a big deal. Why would you leave your last hairdresser? Um, it is a big deal. So I want to I want to know why, because I want to make sure that I'm not doing that with my clients. Um, and it's obviously just interesting to find out. So when I do speak to my new clients and I ask them more often than not a question, sorry, more often than not, the answer to my question of why have you come here or why have you left the last hairdresser is always I just feel like she didn't or he didn't listen to me and that may be a breakdown of communication which is so easily done as hairdressers or it may just be like over time you know these clients might have ridiculous ideas that you know you cannot you cannot do but rather than dismissing them involving them in that decision making process you get to the end result the same so they might end up going do you know what i don't have the time i don't have the money and i don't want to be ginger then in which case you get to the end result but you're getting there as a team rather than on your own and being forced to get there or being told that they can't have it. I hope that makes sense and I hope I've answered that. No, that's really interesting and such an interesting topic as well that's kind of not really been dis um, like researched, I guess, before. But yeah, it's such a big part of hairdressers' jobs, isn't it? Yeah, massively. And, um, and I think, you know, if we live in a world where we can we can absolutely nail our technical skills and nail our emotional intellect because it's hard, it's physically demanding, it's so emotionally draining having to jump from one client who may be mourning her father to the next who may be just engaged and wants to talk about wedding hair and you've got to make that switch up so quickly and that's what I think tires us out the most. It's not the blow drying, it's not walking up and down the salon. And it's not the highlights, it's, it's emotionally taking on board what, you get to, what, what your client sort of offloads to you. You know, we're the, we're the nation's unofficial therapists. It becomes a confessional booth, you know, when you and your client, it becomes, it becomes like, it's such a trusted relationship. And essentially they tell you what they would kind of tell their therapist because essentially people don't like talking uh, or sharing their feelings with their nearest and dearest because of judgment or you know previous relationships so we are like the uh we are we are the outsiders we represent the kind of non-bias um sort of un unofficial therapist so of course that's why there's a lot that goes on in the chair and there's a huge element of trust and also it's a very intimate thing you know touching someone's hair changing the way they look hugely intimate and something that i definitely take for granted um when i'm 
you know, on a busy Saturday, it's not something you think of every time someone sits in your chair. You don't always appreciate how intimate it is. But you know what lockdown one really taught me is that there are some clients who are living on their own. Um, and when they came into the salon, I realised one of them was kind of a, a little bit, I don't know, I guess her body language is slightly standoffish. And I was a bit like, are you okay? And she said to me, well, I've actually lived on my own and no one's touched me for four months. And like, I totally, totally understood. As soon as she said that, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Cause you are, you're like her body language was sort of, was it right? And I was like, I did something wrong. But like, she hadn't been touched. And like, I dove straight in and I was like, right, what are you doing with your hair? And she was just like, <laughs> and then it made me realize like, God, it's such an intimate affair, you know, it is. Um, in many cultures, touching someone's head is, is like, you know, seen as very intimate and that's why you can't actually do it. So something to sort of bear in mind, I guess, especially when we go back to the salon. Now, I'm just going to give this a little, this is what I would probably do in the mirror, a little play around. Um, loving the shape, actually, really like it. So now I have, um, now I have the choice to cut the back. Obviously, what's happened here is everything's been brought forward towards me. So now at the back, we've got this kind of like, almost like a point. So what I'm gonna do is literally club cut that, just to make it a little bit thicker on the baseline. Cause I have not cut this baseline, which means, you know, when you first get a mannequin, you get that kind of torn out baseline. So I'm just gonna thicken up that baseline. Um, and then I'm gonna layer it for you. Any questions, Elena? We have, absolutely. Um, lots of people would like to know, could you mind us the name of your book and where they can find it? Because lots of people really resonated with what you were saying there. So the book, guys, um, it's actually on my Instagram bio. So it's at Jordana with two N's, Cabela with two L's. So at Jordana Cabela. You'll find the link in my bio. It will take you to a page called Publishizer. Um, this is a pre-order campaign. So I've written the book and the manuscript is finished. However, in order to get a publicist or a publisher to take me on and print the book, I have to sell a number of pre-copies, pre-order copies. At the moment, I've got 50 sales, but by the 12th of April, I need to have a few hundred sales in order for my publisher to basically take me on um, and print the book. If I don't get that by the 12th of April, I will still print the book, but it's just gonna take me a lot longer because I'll be doing it on my own. Whereas what's happening now is, um, I'm overwhelmed by the support of all these people who have purchased the book, um, knowing that they may not get it for about five months, um, but they're supporting it because I think a lot of people feel like this is a really good way to start the conversation, you know, we're finally us hairdressers are getting what the kind of recognition that we deserve and I think the pandemic's really kind of taught us as hairdressers that we are, actually are regarded as quite highly in, in the nation's well-being, um, so I think the timing of the book is excellent. Um, I just hope that we get enough pre-order sales um, to really to get a, a good publisher on board because as a, from a publisher's perspective, it might sound a bit barky mad, you know, a book on a mindful hairdresser or a book on the psychology of hairdressing. Um, but I think if we can show that actually there's 150 sales that have been made before the book's printed, um, then we could show the publisher that there's enough interest in this to get it printed and for them to take me on as a client. So Amazing. I'll cut it back. I'm going to go straight in and do a nice, very, very simple box layer. So I'm taking a kind of panel section, quite a thick one. And I'm just literally going to bring that all up. We've had a few questions on what kind of face shapes this style would see. What do you reckon on that one? <laughs> Um, good question. So I'd say like any, and I say I say any because essentially, I'm just going to cut that corner off, guys. So where those layers, oh, it's hard for you to see, but where those layers meet the baseline, there's a bit of a corner. I'm just going to cut that corner off. I'm not taking it directly up. I'm taking it out to find that corner. Um, it's quite a big corner, so I'm going to take that right off. Um, so the question was, would this suit many face shapes? In my opinion, yes, it would, because although I've gone through how to cut that shape, the variables here are how, how short do you start the first connection point? Do you start it at the chin? 
it's going to be a, a little less kind of flicky than Billie Eilish? Do you start it up at the nose, which is exactly the same as Billie Eilish? Or do you start it slightly further down? So that's a variable. The second variable is how far back do you connect it to? Do you connect it to just where the ear is, which is quite a steep angle, which means you get less, less layers, less flicks? Or do you go quite far back, like oh, I've done today, which is behind the ear, which means you get more of a carved out, uh, out finish, which means you get more flicks and you open up the face more. So it's, it is so versatile. And the third variable here is when you connect the fringe. So Billie Eilish has got um, a little fringe that is connected to this, which I'm going to cut dry. So while you guys want to type any questions, I'm going to quickly blast this dry and then I can show you how to do the fringe and how to dry it. Amazing guys. So while Jordana's blow drying, please do send in any questions. Um, but just a reminder on Jordana's book, it's called The Mindful Hairdresser. And we popped the link um, in the comments so you can go and check that out. But yeah, please do send in any questions that you have. So I'll be another couple of minutes just smoothing this out really quickly.
How are we doing for time, Elena? We've got about five to ten minutes left. Perfect. One side time. Okay, so I've done a little bit of smooth blow dry for you because obviously mannequin hair can be a little bit crazy. Um, but essentially, this is what it looks when it's blow dried forward. And then as soon as you part it, I can show you with my comb, um, and you brush it sideways, you just get the most beautiful kind of layered shape, which looks very classic. Um, but for a client who's got that natural texture of Billie Eilish hair, what you'll get is if you ask, if you tell her to either sleep on it or natural dry it, you get such a beautiful um, texture. So I'm going to recreate that texture with some tongs because obviously we don't have time to allow it to natural dry today. So I'm going to show you how to get that finish um, some friendly way very, very, very quickly. Um, now, Billie Eilish does have a little bit of a fringe, um, but I like the way this fringe sits on her, but I'm gonna show you what she would, or her hairdresser would have done. So it's a, a very shallow triangle. This fringe sits completely independently to the rest of the layers around the, fly, the front. So shallow triangle, if you take a really deep triangle, you'll get quite a wide fringe, but you also get quite a heavy fringe. And hers is so beautifully kind of torn out. So literally, I'm going to take that triangle, divide it in half, so I'm not cutting too much at a time. And pop a little clip on it. And then using my razor, I'm going to visually cut, sort of torn out fringe. Now you can do this with scissors as well. Just make sure that when you are doing this, you might want to lift it. 
and then that sits completely independently um, to the rest of the hair, even though it looks connected when you look at it here, but it is actually completely independent to the rest of the hair. And then for the fringe, you can literally just blow dry it up and over. Really, really narrow fringe, which is quite nice and sort of slims the face. And let that sort of dry the way it is. And then with the tongs, guys, it's so, so simple. We're literally just going to give a little bit of kink to the hair. So I'm kind of using the angle at which I, I cut it. So I'm going in with the tongs, twisting once and then letting go. And I think that letting go motion is what really gives us a beautiful kind of fake texture. <laughs> Now it looks a bit funny when it's not being dressed, but if you can run the uh, run the curlers through the hair rather than hold it there, it kind of helps make it look really undone rather than too polished. And then the trick is just to go like kind of opposite ways. And the trick at the end is to really brush this out, blow dry out, um, and get a little bit of product in it. So the more kind of slap dash you can be, which is kind of a bit foreign for us hairdressers. The more slapdash you can be, actually the better, because it will give you such a nice natural looking finish. So really thick sections, some going out, some coming forward. Um, and running it through rather than holding it there. That's looking great, Jordan. It looks so great. And yeah, we've had loads of comments saying how amazing that cut is. So thank you so much for showing us. We are coming to the end of time. So I just wanted to fire through a quick few of our questions that we've had in. Um, a few people would like to know what the tongs are that you're using, please. So these tongs are GHD tongs. They come in two sizes. Um, yeah, they're just normal, regular GHD tongs. This is the smaller of the two. I believe it's the um, 32 millimeter. Well, I'm just going to seal the ends at the back. Um, and there's a slightly larger one. Now, I would recommend getting both. <laughs> you can literally create so many looks with both, and um, you don't want to like restrict yourself by buying only one. So, I'm going to kind of finger brush this out, get a little bit of spray in it, a bit of texture. And then the trick is. This is what I do on clients as well. So I grab hold of the hair, so it's looking too perfect and finished. And I pop one hand down like this to kind of secure the volume that I put in. And then with a blow dryer, I literally blow dry upwards. And then it looks quite big. And then in the mirror, I would then literally, before I spray it, I place it where I want it to be placed. And you can see you get this such a beautiful kind of like sort of grown out bardo-y fringe, which is there, but it's quite narrow. Um, you can accentuate that with your blow drying technique. And then you just got these beautiful sort of kicks um, of layers, but it's still a long haircut, but the width is here. So you can go as messy or as cute and sort of salon friendly as you want. Personally, I find a lot of my clients like to move away from the salon finish. And if you can make it look a little bit more kind of like they've done it or accidental, then I think we're on to a winner. Hope you guys like it. Sorry if I've run over time. Any more questions before we finish? Looks amazing and yeah, absolutely love that. Um, we've got a few more questions which I'll squeeze in. Um, how would you go about finishing products for this look to help keep it looking um, great? Personally, actually, Billie Eilish's fringe is ever so slightly shorter than that, so um, I might trim into that before I take a picture. Um, I, I would go in with any texture spray, so any, any kind of spray that's got like a sea salt texture, or you can go in with a balm, or you can um, go in with, do you know, sort of the dry cleansing, like the dry shampoo sprays for the roots, but something to separate it out and make it gritty. You want that rather than too smooth. 
Um, so anything like a balm or a texture spray, just nothing too um, like silky, if that makes any sense. Amazing. It looks brilliant. I think that's brought us to the end of today's session. But thank you so much, Jordana, for um, demoing today. And we'll be uploading this onto our IGTV and Facebook channels as well if you want to watch it back. But thanks so much, Jordana. So much. It's been a great morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. See you soon. Bye.